Welcome everybody. Today is lecture number four uh, in our electroculture series with Yannick Von Doren. Today we're going to be examining Irish round towers, paramedic round towers, and how we can use them in our gardens and in agricultural fields. Welcome Yannick. Hello, welcome everybody. So it's a big topic, a very interesting interesting topic that uh, joins uh, the other techniques we have seen. Um, that will be very interesting, I, I think so, I think. So uh, let's begin. Huh? <laughs> so um, electroculture, the Irish round towers, paramagnetic round towers, we, we call them the Irish round towers, because it was discovered in Ireland, or, or the effect on plant growth was discovered in Ireland by uh, Phil Callahan. And paramagnetic, why? Because uh, they all they are all paramagnetic. So it's a, a kind. Of, it's it's the property of the material it is made of. Um, uh, mostly basalt or or granite or certain other paramagnetic rocks and and so we will see how we can use them and uh, how uh, they were discovered and how to make them too and, and some huge results we can uh, get uh, with them yeah so let's go <laughs> So we will look at the, some history. We will speak about uh, Phil Callahan that uh, uh, that uh, made us discover the, the the science behind it and how it works and and the most information we get from Phil Callahan. And we will see also some scientific principles, uh, installation modes, and uh, results and testimonials. So the history, uh, we, we see those round towers like on those pictures all over Ireland. So they are quite huge. Huh? They are like uh, around uh, 30 meters high, uh, 30 to 40 meters high. Um, they are very mysterious because they don't have really a doorway on, on the bottom. They, it, it's like they have uh, windows, openings, but uh, it's like there is no really a rule why and where they position the windows. Uh, they are mostly high up in the tower, like you see. Uh, but it's very strange because inside they are like uh, hollow and um, and the rock is made of paramagnetic rock, mostly basalt or, or granite. And they are all over Ireland. And like you see on the bottom left, uh, there is one tower in the back and then one tower in front that is like uh, where they built like a little uh, uh, house or room. And uh, it's a chapel, a chapel. The, the round towers were built uh, before the churches in uh, Ireland. So it was built around 600 to 1000 uh, after Jesus Christ. Um, if we listen to the archaeologists, some think, some archaeologists thinks uh, it were the monks that built them. Other things, uh, they were already there where, when the monks uh, uh, came to uh, Ireland and transformed them uh, to make them more a Christian uh, in, in a Christian appearance. But um, whatever, where is the truth? Um, in the two, uh, the, the two uh, theories are interesting. Um, what is interesting is that they were there already, and uh, we will see so, some more about it. There are even towers um, uh, at other places in the world, like uh, this tower in Belgium. Uh, uh, this was built uh, quite uh, recently um, after World War uh, to, to remember 
um, the the peace of World War One, and they built uh, because there were a lot of Irish uh, in Belgium uh, during the war to fight, and a lot of them uh, lost their lives. So uh, they build a round tower, exactly as uh, 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 exactly the same round tower as as the one in uh, as the ones in in Ireland. And this is very interesting that they build this uh, to bring peace uh, because uh, it creates also a peaceful atmosphere, and we will see why uh, this can happen too. It brings harmony and peace and energy all around. Ah, yes, you have the book on the right. You see that book, The Irish Round Tower. This is one of the most interesting books about the archaeology, and, uh, and, 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 and it's also a reference about the Round Towers in Ireland. There are not so many books about the Round Towers, even that there are a lot of Round Towers and a lot of tourists uh, visit those Round Towers in Ireland, but uh, uh, there are not so many books about it. It's a really a, a big mystery, those Round Towers. In history, we, we see that we have already those round towers around 1,000 after Jesus Christ. But maybe it's also an evolution of the pyramids. Uh, why? And pyramids are already there a few thousand years before Jesus Christ, uh, maybe 10,000 years even. Uh, sometimes they speak about this. Um, but uh, why? Because we find back the uh, similar uh, construction rules in the round tower and in the pyramids that we see all over the world. And uh, when we look at the pyramids all over the world, in most cases, you have also obelisks and, and, uh, and towers uh, close to the pyramids. It's like they work together in a certain way, probably, but just uh, um, a hypothesis. And um, so the round towers, it's around 1,000 after Jesus Christ. It's a big mystery why they build it. Uh, and then uh, you had uh, Phil Callahan around uh, the 40s, 1940s and, and 50s and 60s. And he, he, he discovered how those round towers have huge effects on plant growth. And then it's like the, uh, the last... Uh, 20, 30 years that farmers uh, begin to, to really experiment with it in uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, France, uh, uh, Germany, Italy now also, and, and maybe also in the US now and Canada. Uh, so it's, it's quite recently that, uh, that, that uh, farmers begin and the gardeners begin to experiment with it in their garden. And, and uh, the last years, uh, a lot uh, since I speak about this, and this year uh, even more, it's every year, uh, more and more gardeners and farmers uh, experiment with those towers. So we... we we get more and more results and feedback, and this is very interesting to improve and to learn also more about how they work and, and how we can have the most effect of it. So we will see that. So it's quite recent. You find already uh, hieroglyphs like this, where you see like round towers with the same angle on the top. That angle on the top is a similar angle as the angle you find in the pyramids, in the big pyramids uh, all around the world, and the one in Egypt uh, has an angle of 51 degrees, uh, 51, 51. And uh, you find that angle also again in the top of the round tower. So that's very, very interesting and strange. That angle, we find it back to in the rainbow, how uh, the rainbow is created after rain. Uh, you find also that angle. And uh, that's interesting because that angle is not just an angle by hazard. It's uh, really an angle that corresponds with nature's constants in, in physics. So it's not uh, just uh, any angle, it's a special angle. 
Uh, ah, yes, here on the right, you see also those towers. That's also one of the towers that is like an evolution that goes, uh, begins to look like a castle. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, and with the wall around. So uh, it seems that when when there is a wall around, it's like it concentrates the energy also inside inside the wall. So that's also interesting. This makes us think about the atmospheric antenna with a, a round fence around that that concentrate the energy probably. So that's also interesting. Here in England, you find uh, those kind of stones, uh, very old uh, Celtic stones, probably, uh, that um, that looks like a phallus, a phallus. That's what we can find also in Asia, uh, very similar. Uh, and, and then you have uh, that uh, big uh, standing stone on the left. That's the biggest in England. Uh, it's around 19 meters high, I think, and it co it represents also a kind of a symbol of fertility. Where um, when you speak with dowsers um, and and uh, archaeologists uh, interesting in energy, uh, they mostly speak about uh, those stones as as an antenna that. Um, communicates the energy between the cosmos and the earth and the earth and the cosmos. It's like a symbol of fertility. And uh, in the evolution, when we look at archaeology and history, well, in the evolution, maybe it evolves to round towers that were a little more sophisticated. But in the on the round towers, we find also some symbols of fertility, uh, uh, the, some drawings that were carved in the stone uh, that uh, represents fertility. So that's also very interesting. It's like it's the same idea, and it's maybe not just an idea. It's not just a tradition. It's uh, when they built things in the past, they had always a reason and a real function. It was not just to make it nice. So when they speak about fertility, so it's probably, it really has an influence on fertility. It's not just uh, to make it nice or pray. No, it's also that it has a, use, a real use and a, and a real effect. And that's what we see. So it, uh, what we see about the effects on the plants uh, corresponds with, with what the archaeologists uh, find of symbols on those towers and stones. So that's very interesting. So maybe we are touching a kind of discovery, uh, some truth. So we continue. And when the monks came and, and the Christians around thousand after Jesus Christ, um, then, then you you then they built um, monasteries around and chapels and churches and um, also uh, statues of the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary is also a big symbol of fertility. So it's in in the in the, in the, in 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 the religion in Christian religion. So it's very interesting that uh, uh, the Virgin Mary came, uh, come, uh, is coming there. Um, and when we look at the Virgin Mary, it's a, it's a wife, a woman, a woman in, in, uh, in energetic perspective represents mostly, or symbolic perspective represents mostly uh, the earth, or the earth energy. And then she is looking to the sky uh, uh, to the God for the, the, the uh, God or the Father or the cosmos. So it, uh, it's a similar relation or similar symbol or similar as, uh, explanation as, as those of the stones. So it's, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what is also interesting that what we saw also in the presentation about basalt is that uh, a lot of places where the Virgin Mary appeared, uh, where there were ap ap appearances, 
uh, of, of the Virgin Mary or paramagnetic rocks like uh, the, the like in Lourdes in France or in the Mont Saint Odile in France, uh, different places where uh, you have uh, monasteries or big high energy pieces uh, were paramagnetic. So it's also very interesting to notice this. The books that uh, helps us a lot to understand the round hours are the books of Bill Callahan. You have the book Ancient Mysteries, Modern Visions, The Magnetic Life of Agriculture. You have also the book Paramagnetism and the book Nature's Silent Music about, uh, from Philip Callahan. And uh, those three books are really very interesting and uh, to. Um, to open our minds consciousness about the, the significance and the influences of round hours. How did he discover uh, the, the importance of the round hours? It's when uh, Phil Callahan, he was a soldier uh, during World War II, and he was a radio technician, and he was posted in Ireland to, uh, to make uh, the radio antennas antennas working well uh, for the army. And at the same time, he had some time to observe uh, the surroundings. And he discovered that the local farmers uh, uh, like to go with their herd of, of sheep around those round towers. Uh, and they, they told that the grass was a lot better quality around those round towers. So then he, he began to to try to understand uh, this phenomenon, why, and uh, he began to measure uh, the radio waves um, or, or to measure if, if those round towers has an influence on the radio waves around and maybe on plant growth. And so he began to measure the round towers and he discovered that the round towers um, received uh, low frequency radio waves of the earth what we call today the Schumann waves, for example. Well, in that time, the Schumann waves were officially not, uh, not, uh, not, uh, uh, not discovered yet. And, uh, but, but he, he, in reality, already discovered it. Huh? Uh, but Schumann, Otto Schumann, it's only in the 50s that he discovered this officially or that, that we gave, or that the scientific people gave the name Schumann waves to those uh, low frequency radio waves. And, um, and so uh, he began to do little experiments with little round towers to see if his, if his uh, idea or hypothesis uh, worked and uh, it worked. And so we will see that uh, in next slides. Uh, what is, is that all those round towers in Ireland are um, put on a map, like on a map that is that is really matching with the map of the stars uh, above Ireland on the solstice. So that's very strange. Uh, that shows that the the our elders uh, in that time had really huge advance in knowledge uh, to be able to do that. Uh, today, we can maybe do that because we have a GPS, but in that time, we it's really a mystery how they did that to put all those round towers exactly on the places matching the map of the stars above Ireland on the solstice. So it's very strange. That's also similar with the pyramids. The pyramids in uh, Egypt are also uh, put on, on uh, like uh, corresponding with the map of the stars. So very, very interesting. So that's why also I say, I tell that uh, there are very, a lot of similarities with the construction of the pyramids too. And you see, um, uh, I will continue. You have also round towers all over the world that are quite similar or with similar construction principles, like here in Iran, uh, in Iran, or in Afghanistan, or in Turkey, or 
uh, you have also uh, the churches and and other kind of towers or temples uh, in uh, in India in Sri Lanka. Um, uh, probably they have all a similar um, similar working principles. Hmm. Or that's what we think. Uh, in very old images like this one, drawings, uh, you find also like here a village with those atmospheric antennas all around. And then you have also like a round tower in the middle of the village and a wall all around the village. Uh, archaeologists are always telling us uh, when there are walls and towers that it's like uh, castles to make war and protect uh, themselves. But uh, in the Middle Ages, for example, in Alsace, there were there was a, a time where where during five hundred years there was no war. So uh, what, why would you build then? Uh, uh castles and things to protect you when there is never war uh, like uh, during 500 years uh, so it's uh, that, that's uh, that's questions we can ask to ourselves uh, our history was not always uh, 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 uh making war there were also long peaceful uh periods and uh, and uh, probably um I don't believe those towers were built uh, as protection or things like this. Uh, I, I more believe it was built to improve the energies around and that they have advanced knowledge about uh, how energies work. Uh, and that's what we are discovering again in a certain way. Mm. Um, an example, when an army built something uh, like uh, a missile or whatever uh, uh, construction, they they don't make it that it at the same time uh, improve plant growth and uh, at the same time it kills people. So that that's that that's not a logic. <laughs> that's not uh, so. Uh, wh how, when we see the huge effects on plant growth of those round towers. So uh, that makes me think that it was really made to improve the energy and improve fertility and, and nothing to do with uh, war or, or whatever, things like this. Hmm. So the round towers brought us, brought us to the idea to make uh, uh, similar towers on, on a little scale to for the farmers and, and gardeners and then we, we uh, with the ideas um, uh, promoted and explained by Phil Callahan uh, and um, in my network in France we, we built uh, and also in Germany Austria we built um, those like you see on the left with the ceramic tube filled with basalt and uh, on the top like a cone uh, a basalt cone and uh, or on the right you see those little towers that we built with really huge a lot of uh, nice testimonials with them uh, that were made that are made of uh, cement mixed with uh, basalt sand so it's quite easy to make and uh, and uh, it was inspired the idea is to have like a, a, a cylindrical column similar to a round tower but uh, in in paramagnetic rock and so we we mix uh, paramagnetic basalt with cement to hold it together and uh, to make it similar to a round tower and to make it also quite simple to build. And uh, and with those towers, uh, since now around 10 years, we had uh, huge results. Uh, every year we improved it, uh, we, we will see that. So the, the original round tower from Ireland are hollow. Uh, and the ones we make for the garden until now, we made it all, always completely filled with uh, with basalt. And we had also huge results. So it's uh, it, it, it doesn't necessar necessarily had, have to be hollow, but it can be an experience to make some hollow ones and to look if maybe they work even better. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. We 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 will need to experiment this. So we continue. Um, 
Yes, what Phil Callahan discovered is that those round tower receive like a radio antenna, uh, low frequency radio waves. And it's not the only effect of the round tower. There are also probably other mysterious effects of the round tower, but that's an effect that we can measure and that we are sure of it. And um, so those low frequency radio waves, uh, we call them today the Schumann waves, but there are maybe also other uh, waves in, in that frequency spectrum uh, on Earth, but the Schumann waves are the most um, known and uh, uh, where there's some scientific research about. And probably those round tower amplifies those uh, Schumann waves. And those Schumann waves are now uh, known to be very important for fertilization, for the fertility of Earth and fertility of uh, all living organisms on, on, on Earth, and also their health and their growth. So that's also our psychological health also. Um, that's interesting because uh, why I tell I speak about the psychological health, it's uh, to, to, to take reference to the tower built uh, to bring peace in Belgium. Uh, well, uh, the, it's, it's like it brings peace. It's like we are like more connected with the Schumann waves also. Huh? Uh, uh, it's very important for our brainwave activity, also the Schumann waves. So and all and so also our mental uh, mental uh, uh, harmony in a certain way. Um, the Schumann waves are not just uh, one frequency. Huh? It's really a broadband, uh, 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 yes, a broadband frequency spectrum in very low frequencies. You, you have uh, like a picture from a science article from Japan on the, on the bottom left. You, you have 7.83 Hertz, that is the most famous frequency, but you have also harmonics 14.1, uh, 20.3, 26.4, 32.4, and you have even some others like this. And those Schumann frequencies are generated every time you have a thunder on Earth, somewhere on Earth. Uh, it generates a broadband frequencies and the Schumann waves that will travel all around planet Earth. It's like a, a kind of heartbeat of planet Earth, important for, uh, um, uh, for the ha harmonious uh, gro growth of plants and animals and, and, and well-being. And uh, now it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot more known than in the past. And now you find on internet uh, a lot of uh, devices to generate the Schumann frequencies. Some work, some is not. So some others uh, don't work. Yeah? But, but it's now uh, more widespread known that uh, those frequencies are very important for our health. Uh, a lot of people that that struggle with electromagnetic uh, disease or, or problems with uh, electro pollution or, or, or sensitiveness to electro pollution, pollution uh, can benefit really huge from uh, round towers and uh, those uh, devices that generate uh, the Schumann waves. Uh, they, they really it, it really improves a lot their health or it can really improve a lot of their well-being. But also for the ones that are not so sensitive to electropollution, it will also improve. Uh, it will also bring beneficial energies to them. Huh? It's for everybody. We, we all need those frequencies. Uh, here an example, uh, a, a nice image to to a nice image to represent that our brainwave activity uh, is really also related to the Schumann waves. The Schumann waves we can calculate them with the size of the Earth and uh, and the ionosphere. Uh, it can be calculated uh, theoric theoretically. And then when they measure it uh, in, 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 in practical terms with antennas, well, they see that it corresponds with the theoretical calculations 
uh, when you calculate uh, that frequency with the size of the Earth. So it's uh, interesting because that shows, or it it's an argument that uh, that uh, that the Earth is uh, is a sphere and not flat, uh, because otherwise the theoretical theoretical calculation would not uh, would not work. Uh, but uh, voila, it's an uh, an interesting information and um well about humans uh they discovered that when people go for example in pyramids for relaxing or meditation they they uh they increase the intensity of the schumann resonance and their brainwave activity so that's very interesting and uh, when you when you know that the Schumann resonance it's like uh, when we are between relax and dream state, uh, it's very interesting. It's like we are more connected to planet Earth. Huh? It's like uh, we are maybe also more connected to 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 the plants and and all consciousness on planet Earth. I like to call it radio earth uh, frequency and uh, the Schumann resonance uh, it's like really you you will connect it it will help you to connect with the consciousness all around you of planet earth and and uh, the plants the animals what they also discovered people is that uh, our children also become more creative more maybe more telepathic also it's like we connect to to kind of uh, uh, global consciousness uh, it's it's really that and also energy uh, it's also energy here an example of a tower from a scientific article where they do research about uh, the schumann resonance it's a scientific article from israel and uh, you see that the tower that they built uh, as, a, as, a, as the most perfect or most uh, 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 the, the best antenna to, to capture or to receive, to measure the Schumann resonance uh, is very similar to the round towers. So it's maybe not by hazard. And uh, so I, I made the drawing with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a guy. Uh, uh, to 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 explain it a little bit more so when you have so they made like a metal plate on the soil and then uh, they put like a metal sphere on top of the of a kind of tube and the sphere on the top is isolated from the metal plate on the bottom and then they measure the electrical field in between and uh, they measure uh, very slight uh, differences or fluctuations of the electrical field and they can measure like this frequencies and, and variation and the Schumann uh, frequencies. And what they even tell in that article is that they even can measure when there is a cloud going above the, the tower, even when a little cloud is flowing uh, above the tower, they can measure a slight um, interference or, or differences in the electrical field above. So that's very interesting because that goes in the, in the uh, it confirms or, or it's an indication um, of, of an idea I have since very long time that I believe that the plants will grow even better when you have uh, clouds in the sky and blue sky and clouds uh, uh, flowing than when you have only blue sky or only uh, cloudy sky. It's like it creates uh, electrical fluctuations and, and energy is movement, growing is movement and uh, in electroculture, or it's like an alternative medicine when the energy is like stuck then you have disease and and it creates problems and the energy have always to flow and so when you have fluctuations it's like it flows it's in movement and and then it's good and then it stimulates growth growth energy in a certain way and health so very in interesting that those towers are like the perfect antenna to measure high sensitive or high or, or very weak 
um, electromagnetic fields of the earth so that's very interesting hmm. here another interesting observation that was one of my first towers i built up in the alsace the tower on the left on the bottom left and you see like a violet light on top of it well this this uh, picture was made with my uh, with my uh, phone with my just normal phone at that time uh, around uh, 10 years ago 10 to 15 years ago and um, that violet light it's very similar to the light you can see sometimes or the light that is described by Willem Reich in his organ chambers he, he tells that when he concentrates organ energy, so kind of life energy, at a certain moment, it appears a violet light. So it's a very interesting. It's like it increases organ energy. And on the right, you see a, a tower in my garden with uh, like rainbow colors. But this was made with uh, like a filter that creates uh, rainbow colors uh, that can uh, that can show uh, um, uh, or, or, or express more easily uh, the energies around. Uh, so it's also interesting. Uh, but the, the, the first picture on the left is without any filter, just with the phone. Uh, so it's uh, very interesting. So the effect of round towers, what we see is that or oh, the picture on the right is a little bit deformed because the angle is not exactly on, on that picture, but it's okay. Um, so uh, the effects that we can expect from round towers. Well, on most plants or the most plants in our gardens, we can uh, really increase, have huge effects like around 30, 100% more growth, sometimes even more, uh, sometimes. Uh, there, there were people with really records uh, 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 close to the Guinness Book uh, World Records uh, with with certain vegetables with the use of little round towers. What we see also is that the plants become really a lot more resistance uh, resistant to uh, cold. Uh, we had already testimonials, or I've seen uh, with my own eyes, eyes in my garden, that tomato plants uh, survive uh, uh, um, a slight uh, frost. Uh, uh, also, beans uh, survive a little frost with round towers. Um, the sunflowers also, tobacco plants also, it's like really it's like it increases the, the their energy uh, i explain it like this is that it really increases their energy and then they become more resistant or less sensitive to cold uh, they have more uh, energy inside them they are like uh, yes a, a lot more um, resistant to cold but also to other climatic stress. So it can be excessive humidity or cold or frost or, or heat, even heat. What I saw in my garden, for example, when there was drought and very high temperatures that the grass that I never watered uh, in, my, uh, in my vegetable garden, uh, the grass around stays really very green a long time. And in the meadows around, uh, further away, they were already all yellow, and uh, in my garden, it stayed uh, really a very green, very long time. So it's like it increases also the resistance uh, against uh, drought and against heat. Uh, so maybe it's why they also put those towers in in uh, in Iran, Afghanistan, and and those countries where it can be very dry and very hot. Um, also increased resistance to disease, increased in nutrient content and sugar content, increased in plant size, uh, a lot more uh, giant plants. Uh, uh, there is an error in that slide. It's not no more, it's a lot more <laughs> giant plants. 
uh, and it creates a, a more peaceful environment in harmony with nature and a lot more Schumann waves around. So it's it's uh, very beneficial. Even if there is a lot of electromagnetic pollution, while well, those round towers will increase the Schumann waves, that will make that we we will be less. Um, less irritated and less aggressed by the electromagnetic pollution because our bodies and uh, the plants will be able again to uh, connect with the Schumann waves. Uh, uh, yeah, so an example uh, on the right, you see how uh, those round towers, um, uh, uh, the, the effect on snow, for example, you see that the snow melts a lot quicker around those towers uh, in all uh, in all directions uh, north south east west it's not just because of the sun it's a really a kind of radiation uh, that comes from the the tower even the tree uh, has less uh, snow melted around even that the tree is living and uh, when you have a plant living it's like it radiates heat too huh? but well a round tower will radiate even more um some hypothesis or drawings to explain a little bit how it could work uh from the hypothesis of uh, phil callahan uh, he speaks in in one of his hypotheses that the sun or the cosmos radiates like uh, magnetic monopoles to the earth and the uh, plants um, and the towers will radiate other monopoles from from the um, the earth to the sky and it's like the round towers will attract those monopoles and radiate them around uh, it's a kind of hypothesis from him it's closely related also with the flow of the electrons of electricity. Uh, if we look at the round tower like an atmospheric antenna, then it will also uh, attract electrons and radiate electrons on top of um, It's quite similar, uh, close to the hypothesis of Phil Callahan. And what we see that confirms this is that uh, well, when you have more electrons on the base of the tower, or on, on the base of a pyramid, or an atmospheric antenna, well, then you have also more water, more humidity, because so water will follow the flow of electrons by electroosmosis. And so uh, that's what we see also close to the round towers, that uh, the soil will stay longer moisture, and there will be more humidity around. So that's very interesting. Um, when we look at the picture on the bottom, this makes us think that probably the size of the round tower will optimize also the reception of certain frequencies. Because the size, like a radio uh, antenna uh, of certain sizes, will optimize the reception of certain frequencies. Uh, so that this, this would be something to do more research about, but uh, I think uh, there, there, there are things to uh, interesting things to discover. That's also why I make the little towers of uh, on the royal qubit size. Uh, it's a, the I make uh, one tower. It's around fifty two point five um, centimeters or point three six it would be more exact but in reality you cannot make it uh, at one hundred of millimeters <laughs> uh, but you I make it on a centimeter precise and uh, they, they had huge results we had already huge results with those towers uh, maybe even uh, better than with the bigger ones so it's very interesting. It's probably the size that that will also improve the effect uh, when we match uh, specific sizes. So then I would recommend to match uh, to harmonics of the royal qubit. So you just multiply the royal qubit, 52.5 centimeters, uh, 
by, by two, three, four, five, uh, and then you make your tower at those uh, lengths, and maybe it will even improve the effects. So uh, we continue. Uh, that was also observed by the idea of, of Phil Callahan that the sheep like to graze around those round towers. And I had a, an interesting anecdote like this, a testimonial. It was a guy that went to my workshop and he put it a round tower on, on in the back of his uh, garden and his neighbor uh, in the prairie. And as soon as he put that round tower, the sheep went uh, uh, like to go uh, close to his border with the neighbor. And in the past, they, they uh, almost never were, went there. But uh, then uh, from, from, th from the time he put the round tower, then the sheep liked to, to, like to relax and rest uh, uh, close to, to the fence. Uh, with the garden, uh, with the round tower. So it was very interesting to observe. So uh, the cheap, the, the, the wool of the cheap is also acts also like an antenna. Huh? Uh, it's like uh, a lot of spirals and the, and the material of the wool. Um, it's like a, uh, uh, it's like a hair with a lot of um, uh, uh, hacks around uh, the, the natural uh, fat of the sheep around the wool and that's and this makes really um, a, a big antenna you will see that where the sheep rest in the garden or in the prairie that the grass grow a lot better around the sheep like to rest always on the same place uh, they, they like that uh, to, to rest on a certain place and when you look at the grass, I observed this also already in my in my uh, in my meadow, that uh, the grass were was growing a lot bigger uh, close to to where the sheep rest. As uh, strange, it's interesting. Huh? So we continue. So that's uh, to show the energy radiation of of a round tower. I'd say hypothesis, huh? but it's how I see it. I see it like on the white. Uh, it's like it connects the sky to the earth, and it will radiate all around. Huh? So, like in an egg-shaped uh, form or a circular, circular form. Sometimes we can see like um, like uh, a clover form, but that's what we see with dowsing. But on plant growth, we see more like uh, egg shape or circular form. Huh? Um, so that's uh, quite interesting. Also in all directions. Huh? It's not only to the north, it's also to the east, the west, the south. Uh, in certain experiments, there, were, there was more effect to the west. Uh, but in reality, what I saw uh, in gardens and, in, and at farm fields, uh, it was in all directions. Uh, so... I cannot say I will not say that it's more in one direction. In reality, it's it's all around uh, that it works. Mm. Uh, you can also I call it uh, the church mode or cathedral mode. Um, how I get that idea? It was one time I was thinking, how could I do to increase the energy? of a round tower. And then I had the idea of, of a cathedral with two towers. And then uh, it gives the idea to make uh, like two towers close to each other to uh, um, amplify the energy. And, and this can be interesting uh, for farmers if they want to have uh, a bigger energy, a bigger uh, influence uh, on a bigger area, it can be an idea to put uh, two towers. Um, I experimented this with uh, two towers east-west, but uh, I have to say I didn't saw really uh, big effects, um, uh, more effects on plant growth. And then I was thinking uh, why, why I didn't saw because I had that intuition and 
in most cases, when I have an intuition, it works. And so, uh, and, and this time it didn't really work. And then I was thinking that I was wrong because uh, a cathedral, uh, the two towers are in north-south uh, orientation. And I put it in east-west orientation. So I think it, it's, uh, it's an experiment to do again and to put a north-south orientation. So uh, that will be my next one of my next experiments. So if you do it, I would advise you to put it in north-south orientation and not in east-west like you see on that image. Uh, uh, now I would do it in north-south orientation. But I'm sure when you put more towers, you will have more effects. It's like it uh, it will be it will come in resonance with each other. When you put only one tower, you will have effect also uh, naturally. Uh, but when you put uh, more than one uh, on an area, it, they will uh, they will come in resonance with each other, and this can really increase a lot the effects. Even if you don't close to each other, uh, if if they are further away. Uh, it can also uh, come in resonance with each other. That's how the round towers are built in Ireland. Uh, it's a schematic if we want to inspire us from how they are originally built. Well, you have they are built from stones, and the mortar or the cement between the stones were also uh, mixed with blood. Uh, uh, probably blood from animals, but that's what uh, uh, speaks. Uh, uh, Phil Callahan speaks about this in one of his books. And then I was thinking why uh, Phil Callahan was thinking why, and probably is because in blood you have a lot of iron, and iron uh, when it oxidizes, it, it becomes iron oxide, and iron oxide is more paramagnetic. And the idea is to make a wall tube. Uh, that is paramagnetic, that also that paramagnetic energy goes from one stone to the other, that the mortar is not, uh, I, the, don't isolate that energy, but that, uh, that it will conduct that energy. And uh, that's the idea or the hypothesis. And uh, otherwise we, we could not explain why they put uh, like blood in the mortar between those stones. So those stones are mostly paramagnetic. And even if they built uh, towers in regions where there was no paramagnetic rock, then they took paramagnetic rock a lot far, further away to build those towers. So uh, it shows that it's important that the rocks are paramagnetic. And paramagnetism is also something that is quite recently discovered. Uh, that's uh, uh, what uh, Phil Callahan speaks about and measure. And uh, but in that time of the monks, thousand years after Jesus Christ, how could they know why they built, why they used those stones and not other stones? So they 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 knew about that energy from the rocks uh, in a certain way. We think also that like those towers are hollow, they maybe act as a, as a tube of a, of a church or, or uh, organ or, or piano or, or uh, uh, organ, I think the name, organ, uh, or, um, or like uh, you have the in chime with tubes, well, when you have a certain length, it corresponds with a certain frequency or certain note. And probably they tune like the round tower to certain notes or to certain frequencies. And when you have those uh, windows in the tower, in Ireland, you have a lot of uh, wind. And well, wh when the wind uh, um, uh, flows, uh, through the tower, it creates like a sound, probably a vibration, and, and maybe uh, it, it will also improve or increase the energy by that vibration. When you look at the towers of churches, you have always uh, a sound that is also, uh, the, the sound aspect is all, always very important. You have uh, like a, a big uh, clock 
uh, a big uh, a big bell a bell in the in the church well when you when you when you know that the towers were built before the churches and that may be evolved to the churches well when they in in archaeology they speak that the first monks their sacred uh, um, uh, tools were uh, or some uh, sacred instruments were little bells like you have also the the buddhist monks today uh, that also use a lot of little bells well uh, the 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 christian monks in the past they used also a lot of little bells uh, even today also and uh, so and and this evolves to the a big bell that was in the middle uh, or on top of a tower so uh, probably there is something uh, to discover between the relation with sound and those towers uh, and this uh, probably will help us even to improve the effects of those towers uh, so there's there's a lot to um, to explore like we see how you can build them well there are different ways huh? the the most easy way it's like you see on the white is just uh, taking uh, a tube and fill it with basalt rock or lava rock or certain rocks that this paramagnetic certain granite uh, can be too and to put uh, as a, on the top uh, to close it with just a, a big rock and uh, that that was the first hours i built it was like this and and we had some uh, big results with this and then a few years after i discovered around 2018 i think I discovered about uh, the, the angle on the towers. I, 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 um, I wanted to check the angle and then I, I discovered that it was the same angle as the pyramid. And then I began to make those uh, cones uh, to put on the towers. And then, uh, and, and since then we had even more results and even uh, also very good effects. And then this gives the idea to make those little towers like you see on the right uh, with a mixture of cement and basalt. But you can also make this a bigger like this huh? with cement and basalt. It's quite easy to make like this. Uh, uh, so there are different ways to make it and uh, to get results. Now, I would recommend to use materials uh, i don't like uh, plastics and also i don't feel good to use uh, metal inside or or otherwise uh, exceptionally to make spirals for example in the in the little towers uh on the white we put also spirals igina spirals that we will see in one of the presentations um no not just uh, uh spirals around but uh, i don't have here igina spiral uh, but uh really igina is like a spiral in a cone uh, igina spirals and uh, like uh, to to imitate the snail shells and and with this we had huge results in the tower you feel really that it increases a lot uh, the the good energy of the towers so there are different ways or different ideas that you can use to improve it. Um, since more than 10 years, I use those uh, ceramic tubes to make uh, round towers. Huh? Those ceramic tubes are known to, to be used for uh, uh, wastewater evacuation, uh, but they are less. Uh, less and less used uh, because they they now use a lot more plastic tubes but uh, i use those tubes to make the round towers they are easy it's all natural material it's uh, it's clay that is baked at high temperature that makes a uh, ceramic and then on the on the wall of those tubes you have uh, a layer of uh, silica or of, of silicium uh, because when it melted, it, 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 it creates like a kind of glass around um, that makes it nice, uh, shiny, but also it's silicium. It's like 
you have a tower of silicium also. In basalt, you have also a lot of silicium. Now, silicium is not paramagnetic, huh? uh, but uh, silicium will also act as an antenna with uh, high frequency um, uh, cosmic uh, waves or, or cosmic frequencies. When we speak about high frequencies, it's mostly coming from the cosmos and low frequencies from the Earth uh, in, at, uh, on a radio electromagnetic perspective. Huh? And it's like those round towers or like a connection between the two. You have those tubes in any sizes. Huh? You can get them a little size, big size. Uh, you can have them like two, three, four, five meters tall and uh, like uh, one feet uh, diameter or less or bigger. You, you have that really in all sizes. The, the one that I use the most for the gardens and uh, fields are the size of, um, of uh, 20 centimeter outside diameter or 15 centimeter inside diameter, half a feet inside diameter and um, and one meter fifty uh, tall, um, because that size you can easily handle uh, alone. Uh, as 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 soon as you take a bigger size, then you have to be uh, two people to 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 carry it and to move it because it's more easy uh, to use when it's not too heavy and uh, to install and it's more easy to install more towers than to install a, a big big tower where you need machines to handle it uh, so um, when you use a big big tower you will also need a lot more basalt to fill it you have also to think about this uh, so with uh, the tower of one meter fifty, we had uh, very good results. And uh, so, wh when I have a, a winning recipe, I don't change too much the recipe. <laughs> yeah. So here, that's another winning recipe. It's uh, to mix uh, cement with uh, basalt. So you can. Uh, find in quarries uh, basalt rock that is crushed uh, into sand or little stones and you can uh, I would advise sand uh, and mix it with cement you can also mix it with limestone if you want and um, I mix it like around 40% uh, cement and uh, today how I do it and 60% uh, uh, basalt sand but you can uh, make a little more less uh, cement. Um, it seems that it's uh, I, I'm not engineering in, in building materials, but it seems that uh, it's uh, even more stronger when you you put less cement and more basalt. Huh? So uh, that can be interesting to make it more stronger. And like you see on the image uh, on the bottom, that's an easy way to make it. You take a tubes like this, uh, a, pl a plastic tube that, that you cut in half. And you put uh, then a um, uh, uh, scotch, uh, um, a tape on it to, to hold it together. And then you, you put it in a cone. I have uh, plastic cones like this that, that I... I, I um, I distribute on my side too. Uh, you can make with 3D printer or you can make with just a piece of, of, uh, of aluminum like this. Uh, you can make a, a cone, um, uh, just a little equipment's work or a little, little work to do it. And, and then you put just the tube in the cone like this. And then you hold that together and you just fill with the, with the cement. And after uh, two days, it's hard and uh, you have, and then you just take uh, the mold of it and, and you have uh, a tower. So it's quite, and then you make a next one and you make as many as you want like this. So 
Uh, oh yes, why it's red, why it has a red color is because I put some more iron oxide inside. Now, the towers without iron oxide will work also very good. We had also very good results, but I like it to put some iron oxide because I like that color. And uh, I've seen uh, very good results with this one. I, I feel them the best. And so I do like this. Uh, in, the, in those little round towers you find on my site, I put also uh, Igina spirals, uh, like you see on, on the top image on the, on the left. Uh, you see uh, close to the towers, those uh, cones to make spirals and some uh, spirals like this and uh, made of aluminum or uh, copper. And you can put this inside the tower. And then I put also a quartz crystal inside uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, we feel that it works even better like this. Uh, now, those are improvements I made over the years. The, the, my really first towers were without spirals and without uh, quartz crystals. Uh, but uh, uh, now I do it like this because uh, I've seen that it even increased uh, the energy and the effects. Uh, every year we do new experiments, uh, uh, but this uh, mess, I feel very good. Mm. So it's quite easy to make like this. Uh, that's an image of one of my first towers uh, before I used cones. Huh? Then I, I put uh, just a rock. It, it was a kind of granite rock uh, from uh, the place where I live. And I had already very good results with, with them. Huh? So if you don't have a cone on top of it, it's, it's not uh, so bad. You can also take a rock you find uh, locally. But I would recommend uh, a rock with a lot of crystals inside, inside, even if they are little crystals, like in a granite rock or, uh, or basalt or, uh, or a paramagnetic rock, but not limestone because limestone or calcium uh, rocks or calcium rich rocks are not uh, paramagnetic. Huh? So, uh, if we want to make it the most paramagnetic, uh, we will use uh, paramagnetic rocks or rocks with crystals to make like the point effect or to make the an antenna effect with uh, surroundings or with uh, electromagnetic waves of, of the earth. And so, and then I uh, just put it in the soil like uh, 20, 30 centimeters deep. You can even put it deeper if you want. It's open on the bottom. And then I fill it just with uh, basalt sand or powder, and it works too. Um, it's, uh, so the basalt is really connected with the soil, uh, with the earth. Uh, there is no isolation in between. Uh, and then I just fill it and uh, put a rock on top of it. And then it works. Um, we observe that it works even better if we um, connect it with the water. What, what we see is that as when it stays very dry, it doesn't work so well. And so uh, in most times, uh, the water will, will go up to the tower, on, to the top of the towers uh, from the inside, uh, uh, naturally through the basalt uh, uh, around after uh, around two weeks. It takes, uh, it, it goes quite quickly. It's like it attracts the water from uh, below, from the earth, that will be attracted like by capillarity and electrosmosis uh, to the top of the tower. And sometimes it can be very moist uh, on top of the tower. When you put uh, the, the stone off and you look at the basalt, you will see it. It's very humid, very, very humid. And but if you install it and it's already dry outside, like in summer, then it's, it can be an idea to help to uh, get uh, uh, humid. And then you take your, your water and, uh, or some uh, water and you move water around the tower and inside the tower like you would 
hotter a plant and then it will help to connect the energies of the tower with the earth it's like a, it's it's like a connection it's like you put uh, the the connection on and then it will work a lot better yeah um if you're good in dowsing then you can uh, check and and uh, look for um, a place a better place to install it uh, connected to the energy of a water of water uh, uh, like a crossing point of water or uh, a line uh, of water underground or something like this and, uh, we the, uh, i have that feeling that it work a lot of better on those places yeah even if it will work everywhere uh, uh, but um, it can really increase the energy if you put it at at, at wild places so here other uh, pictures of the same tower. Here an example. Uh, that's what we want to see. Huh? Uh, that's what I like to see when I see results. <laughs> so that's a little experiment you find in all books uh, about round towers. Um, and uh, it's a, an experiment in a pot where they made a little tower to, to uh, an imitation of a round tower and they see the radishes and you see that the radishes around the round tower are a lot bigger than the radishes from the control pot. So quite easy to do uh, as an experiment. Huh? Um, so uh, yeah, you, you see on, on the top that in different directions around the tower the radishes are even bigger like on the east uh, on top right uh, but they are all bigger than the the in the control pot uh, uh, even in the other directions uh, now it's a very little experiment in two pots uh, uh, to be sure you you would need to do a lot more experiments huh? but uh, what we see in the fields is that it really increases plant growth all around there, there will be plants that will react a lot more than other plants it depends on the variety probably and and some plants are more sensitive to the energy of the towers and others uh, may be less probably so uh, the, the, don't expect exactly the same results on all plants huh? uh, certain plants you will see huge results for example sunflowers uh, tobacco i saw huge results um uh, leches, leches also potatoes rapeseed um Oh, you have to try huh? uh, also apple trees uh, like a lot of the round tower energy uh in orchards and and uh, beer apples um yeah also is some interesting phenomenon that we read in the book of callahan is that when you put a just a normal cylinder a paramagnetic cylinder um close to a magnetic field it will not really uh, react to the magnetic field but as soon as you put a cone on top of it uh, it's like it will act like a needle, like uh, it will react in direction of the magnetic field. It will orient itself in the direction of the magnetic field. This is very interesting and confirms the importance uh, of the form of the... Um, it's not only the material of the tower that is important, but also the form can improve uh, the energy too. Uh, so... Uh, that's a, a very interesting. The, the paramagnetic effect is uh, influenced also by the form uh, and not only the material. Uh, this is a device that uh, Phil Callahan uh, made or invented uh, to measure low frequency radio waves on buildings and on the towers. He made like a, a specific antenna of a kind of uh, natural uh, uh, fibers, a uh, cloth, a piece of cloth, or put uh, a copper wire inside the, the fibers, 
and he he soaked the cloth in a salt water in salt water and then he connected he used it as an antenna uh, with an oscilloscope so it's quite simple in in how to make it and um and uh, so he called it the photonic ionic cloth radio amplifier and uh, so that's a that's a patent from from 1993 and with this he was able to measure uh, what kind of frequencies come in resonance with buildings he just uh, put that piece of cloth on on the wall or he connected uh, uh, like uh, um, against the wall of, of the tower or church or a temple and then he can like this a uh, measure uh, with which frequencies uh, it will resonate or which which frequencies it attracts or it uh, it uh, it emits so that's very interesting i'm sure we can improve that uh, that invention uh, because today with uh, today electronics uh, that uh, evolved a lot maybe we can uh, improve that also electronics is a lot cheaper than 30 years ago so uh, uh, that, that's an idea i want to share because uh, uh, if, if we can make that again or experiment with this we will be able to also improve the effects or the building of the round towers probably uh, and 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 to and to even better understand how they work uh. so uh, so that's a very interesting uh. now if you speak uh, about this with uh, electronicians if they are not very open or if they don't have uh, much knowledge they will not understand it and they will not believe it that it can work <laughs> so uh, we can only work I, I i talked already with a lot of electronicians about this uh, and it's not easy to find one that is uh, that has an open mind uh, to be uh, ready to uh, experiment it uh, uh, because uh, uh, in most cases all those people that that did a lot of degrees and studies they are like uh, indoctrinated and brainwashed uh, to think in a certain way and they are not always open to uh, to uh, new inventions that uh, contradicts uh, what they learned at school huh? so uh, that, that's the big problem <laughs> uh, but um, we find maybe in our group uh, that there are people that are that has an open enough uh, open mind and and the technical skills to be able to make this uh, why not uh, it would be a dream uh, coming through uh, to to do it and and to continue the research about this so you see another testimonial this was what the first testimonial i saw from a farmer it was when i did um, a presentation i think in two 2012 or 2013 or 2011 or something like this around uh, in Austria and there was a farmer he came to me with uh, with those kohlrabi and uh, he said that around his tower where you see the picture on the bottom left that he made just with simple uh, uh, ceramic tubes and a rock on top of it he filled it with basalt and he said that in a radius of 60 meters around the tower, all the kohlrabis were as big as the one uh, he, he brought with him uh, on, on the top uh, right, or that is in my hands uh, on the left. Um, and all the ones that were uh, further than 60 meters, they were all little, like uh, the one in, in my, in on the white in my hand or the the little you see on the picture so it was a huge difference it's like more than double and then we even opened it with a knife to look at inside of the kohlrabi and there, it was a very good quality kohlrabi uh, it, uh, there was uh, not not um, it was really uh, good uh, kohlrabi so that's very very interesting because it's a very easy technique that can have a huge effect in large areas. So it's also very interesting for farmers with big fields 
because it's quite easy to build. And, uh, and once it's built, it, it will radiate in huge areas and it's, uh, it's forever. It, 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 it doesn't lose energy. It will always, every day, 24 hours a day, radiate uh, good energies that will improve soil fertility, soil microbiology, and, uh, and uh, health, plant health uh, all over the place. <laughs> Other examples in gardens uh, to, to my friends, you see uh, the sunflower on the left. That was uh, to, to a friend of mine um, uh, two or three years ago. And uh, he had like, uh, uh, he, 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 and he had the French record of the biggest uh, sunflower hat around uh, 70 centimeters. And uh, two years before, the record was 59 centimeters uh, diameter. And in two or three years' time, we had like uh, 75 centimeters, like uh, you see uh, the sunflower head, like on the white and on the picture. And that's close to, to 70 centimeters. Uh, so that's uh, results we see uh, over and over again every year uh, close to those round towers. Uh, it's really very effective. Now, and with electroculture in, in general, uh, but those round towers have really a good effect. On this picture, you see uh, a top of the round tower uh, that was made by an artist, uh, a, a, a guy that makes poetry that I asked to make uh, kind of tops like this. It was very nice too. Um, uh, but it's a lot more expensive uh, if you make it like this, but uh, it works very well too. Well, in my garden, I have a lot of towers, uh, so it's not only this tower, and you see also huge sunflowers. Well, that sunflower that you see in the back of, of me, uh, uh, when it was, uh, uh, when it finished to grow, it had uh, a more than 70 centimeters diameter. Uh, so it was over the record of friends uh, at that time. And the tobacco plant was like three meters high and the sunflower three meters 60 high. Now, um, uh, what is important is the, the size of the flower, no, not really uh, how high it is, but uh, it was quite amazing. Also known that I live uh, in a cold, in a cold climate, not really uh, the best climate for sunflowers. Um, uh, I live at 50, 50, 550 meters altitude um, in the mountains close to, uh, to um, uh, in the east of France. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite cold and uh, we have like frost until uh, 15 May. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite cold climate and the season are uh, maybe like in, in Canada at certain places, in the south of Canada probably. Uh, it's, it's quite similar, I think. Mm. Um, so that's a guy, Mehdi, and he had uh, also, uh, uh, he, he make every year uh, records of the, more, of the biggest uh, pumpkin. And the year he used the round tower, uh, it was in 2021. Uh, you see on the picture, little round towers um, in his uh, greenhouse where he every year grow uh, big pumpkins. He has in France almost every year the biggest pumpkin. Uh, he is really a specialist about this. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the year he used uh, the first time electroculture, he, he, he breaks his own uh, record by 100 kilos. He had done 897 kilos and and in the past it was around 100 kilos uh, less so it's it's a it's a huge uh, difference uh? it's like uh, more than 10 percent a bigger pumpkin than than, than he was used to uh? well, with the same uh, other techniques so it's very interesting uh, that he even uh, uh, could uh, increase by 100 kilos his records. And what he also observed is that when 
when uh, he put those towers and uh, he, he saw that um, the roots of the pumpkin, uh, he planted the pumpkin like five meters further away of the towers. And he saw that the roots of the pumpkin went uh, in the direction of the tower at, uh, until under the tower. And it was attracted by the energy of the tower. And that makes me think of uh, a schematic of the of Phil Callahan, where he showed towers like it radiates also through the earth. It's not it's not only that it radiates uh, above the earth uh, horizontally, it will also like radiate energy uh, through the bottom, through the earth. And so probably the, the roots are like attracted by that energy. It's like we see also with the earth magnetic antenna and the wire, it's like the roots are attracted by the wire and then they go to the north. Uh, uh, we, we have seen this already several times with tomatoes, for example, and uh, lettuce and, and, and different plants like this. So it's a strange, it's interesting observation. Eh? So that's a, a capture screen of, of, a, of a newspaper article of him. And you see in the back on the, on the right, the, those little towers uh, in his greenhouse. Uh, so very happy. What is also interesting is that uh, this was an article of 2 October 2022. And, and, then, and then the Christian belief, it's like the feast of, uh, of our garden angels. <laughs> uh, so uh, that, uh, that the today, today Catholic Church or the bad uh, uh, inf infiltration in the Catholic Church want to make disappear. Uh, well, uh, the, the, all reference to the garden angels they try to make it disappear in the Catholic Church. But uh, when you look at churches in the stones, they, they carved a lot of angels. So uh, they, they cannot make it disappear so, so quickly or so easily. <laughs> it's very important to pray for our angels. And they always show us some little uh, signs to help us and here uh, again uh, on 2 October, it's not by hazard, I believe. Um, here an example in my garden, uh, I have raspberries of, of uh, like close to two meter 50 high uh, uh, every year uh, since I put round towers and also other electroculture techniques, uh, but uh, it's something you can see also mint uh, of of even one year it was uh, as as high as me uh, or one meter 80 so uh, that's things you you can really see in reality yeah? it's not uh, it's not exceptional when you use uh, electroculture huh? it, it's it's uh, it's a, it's a normal way of growing well what i believe is that 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 would be the normal standard you see when we see our plants a little it's just because they don't have that natural energy available anymore because of all pollution and and all uh, uh, all stresses that uh, humans uh, had created on earth and also uh, certain natural cycles also at uh, the magnetic energy on planet earth uh, follows also cycles like the sunspot activity too and we are now in a kind of low magnetic energy cycle so uh, as soon as you will increase that magnetic energy or that uh, 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 electromagnetic energy radiating from the towers you will see all plants uh, most plants uh, reacting by a lot better growth and 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 uh, and it's it's how it need to be that that's that would need to be the the normal uh, the normal um, size i think uh, in my eyes so you see the mint uh, in flowering on the on the white picture, for example, really huge. Uh, 
that's a little round tower from from one participant to the to the social network groups of electroculture and and my group uh that that made himself a little tower you see uh, very simple and uh, he see the traditions and you see really huge effect close to the tower so this was a very little tower huh? uh, if you make it bigger you will have a lot more effect around uh, on on a larger area huh? but it's uh, very interesting to make little experiments like this uh, that's a friend uh, close to my place uh, that, that had huge effects and he saw a huge difference in his garden as as soon he put uh, that tower that you see on the left uh, with his giant sunflowers he had also uh, brussels sprouts of one meter 80 high he had like uh, uh, zucchini uh, plants of like uh, two meter radius are very big uh, zucchini plants uh, he had like um, uh, beans with leaves as big as like uh, maybe 20 30 centimeter diameter leaves uh, it was really uh, amazing and also a, a lot of grapes on on his uh, vineyard. Uh, it grows really very well too. Uh, it's, uh, when it works, uh, here you see those uh, leaves from the beans. Uh, and the zucchini plants on the on the bottom on the picture right, really big. And in the past he didn't have such big uh, plants. Huh? It, it was really since he put uh, the tower huh? because sometimes people can say oh in my, at my place I have already uh, nice big plants like this. Yes, but uh, you have to compare with your past and and and, and uh, maybe if you put the tower you will it will even increase your 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 uh, usual results huh? so it's it what, what is interesting is to see how it evolved hmm. yeah so here you see the picture of that tower where we saw in the beginning the violet light well this is what's um uh coming out of the winter and you see already that the grass was a lot greener around it stayed and the the grass uh further around was more yellowish because of the frost and 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 the winter time uh it's in the mountains um well uh you see that it was a lot greener huh, around so that, that that's things you can see easily when you go out of the winter that the grass is growing a lot quicker uh, close to those towers uh, that was a friend uh, it's a friend that had huge tomatoes uh, close to the towers uh, in his greenhouse he just had one tower like this of around uh, 52 centimeters in a little greenhouse and he had uh, a record of tomato like was one kilo 200 grams size and a lot of 900 grams and one kilo he had uh, a lot um, uh, a lot more than usual um, it was uh, last year in uh, in Alsace and so uh, yeah he had also put cones around his greenhouse and in his greenhouse uh, above it uh, that are also inspired from the round towers uh, this was from a farmer before I did the cones at the, at the angle. Uh, I did it uh, like this, for example, uh, with a rock. And he put it, just a rock on, on top of it, a uh, two little, uh, one little and one bigger rock. And uh, this was on rapeseed. And he yielded uh, with his machines 3.7 tons compared to normally 1.7 tons further away. So in a radius of 50 meters around the round tower, he, he measured uh, automatically with his machine, uh, with the yielding machine, uh, 3.7 tons uh, a hectare compared to 1.7 tons uh, further away. So that's very interesting uh, because... Uh, and you it's maybe difficult to see on the picture but um, 
uh, but you could see in reality that it was really a circular size as uh, uh, area around the tower that the plants were a lot bigger and, and further away it was like a limit and then the plants were uh, more little. Uh, so it shows really the, the effect. Uh, after the rape seed, he, he seeded uh, um, a wheat or grain and um, and on the wheat, he didn't saw uh, um, huge effects, uh, but he saw a lot more on the rapeseed. So it shows also that certain crops will react a lot more than other crops. Uh, so that's also interesting uh, to observe. Uh. This was a testimonial uh, in January. Um, I had to go to a village um, uh, with my family. Uh, and um, it was to bring my, my daughter to the scouts. <laughs> and, uh, and there was a church. And you see there were like, uh, you have the tower of the church. It's very old church. And you have like a round tower in the corner of the church. And then you have another tower close to the church. And uh, I was really feeling that there was something special about that church and the energy. And then I, I walked a little bit around and then I saw the uh, a house with uh, that uh, rose plant uh, on the wall. It was like uh, maybe 20, 30 meters from that church, uh, really very, quite close uh, in the street, close to that church. And it was like the, the rose plant was like uh, not being conscious that it was winter time. <laughs> and you, you have to know that uh, there, there was already frost like minus 10 um, uh, and uh, minus five, uh, like during uh, more than a week and, and minus 10 uh, at that time. And, and that rose plant was like not affected at all by, by winter time. It was really uh, amazing. And then I, I went uh, further away, uh, further of that village, and I found uh, another rose plant uh, that was quite normal for the season without any leaves. Uh, so the rose plants uh, were normally like this with no leaves because of winter time. And uh, so it's, it's uh, things like this when you begin to to uh, to know about electroculture, you can begin to observe things like this, and that, that you in normal situation, if you didn't know, you would even not uh, pay attention to it. But uh, then you can begin to pay attention and discover uh, new things uh, uh, around you. It's very interesting. So here again, uh, so about the sizes. Um, ah, my internet side, there is an error. We need to put an, an E at the end, <laughs> but it's the, not a problem. Uh, but, um, model. So I make on my side, uh, or I distribute two models. Uh, you have the model of 52.5 centimeters. It can be 52.4.5. It's not uh, so precise, but it works very well. Uh, it's with uh, two spirals inside and a crystal rock inside too. Like, uh, yes, a crystal uh, and um, uh, a, a quartz crystal. And then I make uh, also those of 26 centimeters as half the size. So this is a very nice size to put in little gardens, in raising beds too, in greenhouses. It works very well. And otherwise you can make a bigger sizes if you find uh, tubes around uh, your place or if you build uh, yourself. Uh, but uh, I, I don't really distribute bigger sizes or exceptionally uh, because it's more difficult to send. It would cost, uh, uh, it's very heavy weight. And so it would cost too much uh, of transport costs. So it's more easily to find it locally and build it uh, locally if you want to make uh, b b b big sizes. Yeah. So you see in my garden, uh, it's, it's a part of my garden, uh, you see uh, two towers, uh, three towers even, uh, 
of our form even uh, and if you look you can maybe find some more <laughs> but uh uh you you cannot make an overdose of towers uh, you can you can put as many as you want um i would recommend to put it like you feel that it 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 creates harmony it's not about putting uh, more and more towers you 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 put uh, uh well my first tower was the tower you see in the middle of the image on the right side and then after a few years i had the feeling that i had to put one in the back on the left and um, it was like by intuition and uh, and then I, I felt it worked even a lot better and the little one completely on the left that was my daughter like uh, my daughters like they saw their father uh, putting towers they wanted also to make a tower and so and then I, I gave them a, 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 a tube at the size of my daughters that they could make their own uh, tower too and that's also a nice energy when children uh, can help uh, I observe that when my children uh, seats uh well uh in most most cases it grow a lot better than when i do it <laughs> so i i'm i uh i'm um, i'm convinced that uh really the energy of the children is it's really uh we need to learn a lot uh, from the children when we do things spontaneously and uh, with joy and happiness uh uh, it 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 creates really m miracles. Uh, 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 there there was a, a tree, uh, an apple tree, where where uh, two years ago my daughter uh, loved to play in, and there was it was a year that she really went a lot uh, playing in that tree, and the year after it was full of flowers, and it was really amazing because that tree uh, grows in the shadow of other trees so normally it 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 doesn't uh it's it's uh, it, it 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 would never have so much flowers because uh a tree apples tree need uh, sunlight to make a lot of flowers and uh and uh, it was really amazing uh, how much flowers that tree had and i'm convinced it was because of the energy of my daughter always uh, climbing in that tree and, and playing around that tree um, so now uh, when my children plays in the garden i let them play and i don't stress if they walk on certain plants because i know it will help the whole garden to grow <laughs> it will bring nice energies in the garden <laughs> And if they have sometimes IDs, uh, even if I don't understand uh, their wall ID, I let them do and, and experiment. And it's always a lot of fun. <laughs> so it's also interesting to use those round towers for animals, huh? like uh, close to the chicken coop or even in the chicken coop. Uh, I'm convinced uh, they like that very much and and one of my uh, dreams it's one time to make uh, a chicken coop in this in the form of a round tower and maybe in the wall to put a basalt uh, mixed with clay and and make like a chicken coop out of it I'm uh, I think uh, they would love that and when we look in archaeology or very old uh, buildings or farms in Europe. Uh, sometimes they had like uh, uh, coops for for the uh, 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 those um, those animals, uh, those uh, birds that that fly with messages, uh, doves, or I, I'm not sure about the name. But uh, they were also built uh, in a round uh, cylindrical structure like this, like a, a tower. So uh, maybe they knew uh, about this. Yes, doves. Yes. Uh, so uh, in Belgium, they had like towers like this uh, as a group for the doves. Uh, so uh, probably uh, they, they knew about that form or the, the energy about that form, probably. Yeah, that's the drawings uh, uh, I made uh, with my children. and. Uh, uh, about uh, the idea to make a chicken coop like this. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so make a lot of fun. Uh, here, that's, uh, this is uh, a tower uh, that I saw one day. Uh, it was a guy that make a beehive like this. Uh, so that's, uh, that can be also an interesting idea to make a beehive in the form of a round tower and maybe also with the materials of results. Um, it's an idea to experiment uh, since today. Uh, 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 I didn't do it until now, but it's uh, it's an idea, uh, I think, uh, very interesting to do. Uh, what we observe also is that uh, that's my daughter that observed this, Eleonore, that uh, the snails like a lot to go on top of those round towers. Even the birds, they like to to sit and um, uh, on the, on the on the top, or like uh, when they are flying and and uh, they just take a little break of a few seconds. They like to go on the top of it. Uh, so it's uh, very interesting. Uh, when you make a new tower, a big one of one meter fifty. It doesn't take long that uh, uh, you have the birds going on it. Uh, after uh, even maybe the first day or after a few days, they go already on the tower. And the, the snail, uh, the snails, they like to go on top. It's like they uh, yield energy on the top of the tower. And this is a picture of the snail. It was a, of a, a little tower that was a little bit broken in my garden. And uh, the snail went on top of it. And then it was very hot and, um, and, and sunny. And the snail was like uh, uh, staying there like uh, two, three days during a very hot weather and sunny weather. And then I was thinking, oh, it will dry out. Maybe it will uh, die. Uh, and um, and then uh, there was a little bit of rain afterwards, and then I saw the snail just uh, going again to the soil uh, uh, calmly. Uh, it's like it really it is attracted by those cones. Uh, my daughter, she even uh, made competitions of snails. She takes uh, different snails. She put it around a tower or a cone, and then uh, she look at the one that is the first one on top of the of the cone, like on the top of the hill. And <laughs> it's really uh, strange. Uh, it's it's they are really attracted by by the top. Uh, so that's uh, very interesting. So here you have my. Uh, uh, I we are already at the end of this presentation. Uh, so you have uh, some reference of, of the books of Phil Callahan, of Philip Callahan. You can uh, may, you can still find them uh, uh, on internet, and um, uh, I'm also making a book uh, uh, about this to 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 go more in detail of all that information from this presentation. Uh, and and to uh, share uh, with you even a lot more testimonials and how to do uh, so but uh, so it will come and uh, you have also my internet sites site uh, internet mail and phone if you need to contact me so I would say thank you very much I hope it was uh, instructive interesting and that it will help you really to begin really even if you are not sure how to make it, uh, just follow uh, the basic information I, I showed you, and and you will really have uh, um, uh, uh, you, you will really begin to see uh, uh, huge results, I believe, and then we can uh, ju just do it. It's it's quite simple. You have also the book um, that is not on the list there, but that's also very interesting about Palm Towers is. Uh, the secrets of the soil. You have a chapter about round towers, and also the book um, uh, St "Stone Age Farming" from Alana Moore uh, that also speaks about the round towers and experiments from Australia. So, um, uh, so it's a huge subject and uh, really very effective in the gardens and in the field. It's one of the techniques that I would say that is uh, uh, the, uh, 
very interesting techniques for large fields to uh, uh, for the farmers. So I, I would recommend to all the farmers to use round towers, and uh, and for in our gardens uh, for, for for sure. Huh? But for farmers, not not all techniques are adapted uh, for for the farmers uh, at large areas. But this is one of the techniques that is really uh, interesting because it can give huge results with very very less uh, investment. Uh, it's it's quite easy to make. So thank you very much, and thank you, Angela, for organizing uh, this uh, presentation too. Uh.